Case Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. Hey folks, how you doing? Hopefully you're all having a great day today. A couple things on my list, like no, like always. The riser block on this bandsaw is spoken for. I ended the last video saying that I'm going to give this riser block to somebody else because it was given to me. Let's pay it forward. I want to take the riser block off because I no longer need resaw capabilities with this particular saw. I want to set it up as a dedicated curve cutting machine. Some of you may recognize this. Some of you are like, what is this second band saw that you have? <laughs> uh, this is the first band's first decent band saw that I ever purchased. It's from 2013. It's the Grizzly G0555 LANV. This exact saw I purchased in 2013 and sold to a friend of mine named Bill, Ben. Sold it to Ben. Ben sold it to a mutual friend named Bill. And now it is back in my shop. It needs a little bit of TLC. Uh, so we're going to get that going probably in the next, in an upcoming video. I, I got the parts already in right there for it. I'm just waiting bandsaw blades and a schedule slot available to do that. So it is spoken for. Um, did I mention who got it? It's the first person on my website article for that video who commented about it. He got it, already had some email correspondence. So uh, it is spoken for. Next thing on my list, and the reason why I didn't talk about that in the past week or so since that video has been out, is because immediately after uh, publishing that video, we went camping. And we went camping in a place that has very low cell signal. I have to kind of like hold the phone right in a certain position in the window in order to get just like one bar of LTE to refresh my, my uh, email. And it's not convenient enough to hold it there for phone calls. So... Imagine a place where you can get away from technology and not be bothered by your phone. Oh, it is so nice. We went camping at Choctaw Lake in Ackerman, Mississippi. That's our, kind of a, like our local go-to campground. It's inexpensive. It's only 20 bucks a night for water and electricity. Uh, they have half the campground set up as first come, first serve. So you basically always have an opportunity to get a campsite and then the other half set up as reservation only through recreation.gov uh, there's two lakes a smaller lake that spills into the much larger lake the both lakes have trails all the way around them the larger lake i think it's like a 2.7 to 3 mile trail something like that all the way around the perimeter of the big lake which can be done in about 22 minutes at a very brisk pace with a bicycle it's just so much fun I feel like a kid again, riding my bike, just flying through the trails when no one else is on them. It's really, really nice. And speaking of no one else is on them, like it's, there's 21 campsites. And I think the most we've ever seen at one time we, when we've been there is like six. So it's always a lower attended place. And it, I like that because it's quiet. It's peaceful. There's a playground for our daughter. Uh, there's trails throughout the woods and the hills around the, the, around the lake. Um, it's just a lot of fun and there's a lot of fishing opportunities. The smaller lake that spills into the bigger lake has a bunch of these peninsulas that are purposefully built into the perimeter of it. So you can go out on this peninsula and basically fish in a little bit more than 180 degrees. It's, it's really, really cool. I caught a couple large bass in the smaller one. And then like three weeks ago, I caught a, just a huge bass out of the big one. It's a, it's a nice place to be at. Uh, so if you're ever passing through Mississippi and I guess you want to go out of your way because it's nowhere near any through corridors on Mississippi, <laughs> in Mississippi, uh, check it out. Oh, I got a fuzz on my nose, spiderweb or something that's driving me nuts. Uh, check it out. It's just southeast of Ackerman, Mississippi, Choctaw Lake. It's on recreation.gov. Love, I love the place. Highly, highly recommend it. Uh, so we got back from that. Now my nose is going to itch the rest of the day. Uh, next on my list is outdoor movie theater. So we want to do an outdoor movie theater here at the house or theater outdoor. Basically, we're going to watch a movie outside. Uh, I don't want TVs at all. We have one TV in the house and I hate that we actually have it. It's just the anyway, hate TVs. So we're going to go the projector route. And the reason why this is kind of stuck on our mind and we really like the idea of this. Well, there's many reasons, but last Saturday, the local high school did a outdoor movie event where it's like three bucks to get in and there's some concessions. They're raising money for something. I don't recall what it was. And then they played the Adams family from, 
it's the first one of the most recent two, the animated one from 2019. So all the kids loved it. Uh, all, you know, we went there. My daughter had some of her friends there. We had some people we knew in the community. And it was just a lot of fun. A lot of fun to get together outside and watch a movie under the stars. And as it's starting to cool off in fall time, you bring a blanket. And it's just, it's a fun experience. So we want to bring that here in, the, in our home, our backyard, and kind of tie that in with our already nice outdoor kitchen and patio area that we focused on over the past couple of years. Because on a diagonal of our, of our uh, outdoor kitchen area, from the fire pit to the kitchen island, if you go in the opposite direction, the ground slopes down basically the entire length of the property on that side. And near the bottom, which is not far at all, is a perfect spot for a, a big inflatable screen. So I found like a 15 foot screen that's you know, nicely priced, and it'll allow us to have plenty of space on the grass, which has a natural slope for like a inflatable mattress or a blanket or something for the kids to just hang out and watch the movie while all the adults are sitting around the fire pit and then still have access to the kitchen area and, and all of that. And uh, it, I think it's just going to be so much fun. It'll be fun for us. Uh, it'll be fun for anyone else who's in the community because heck, everyone's invited. Come on out, you know. Um, Anyway, what I'm getting at here is if you have any type of outdoor movie theater experience, so like a projector that you do or do not like, a screen you do or do not like, and speakers, a speaker set, of some type of audio setup you do or do not like, that's what my biggest holdup here. Uh, please let me know. Please give me some feedback. I'd love to hear it. Uh, if you have links to your Facebook or Instagram or whatever for your particular setup, let me know. This is not going to be something that I do a, a, a video on because there's no DIY about it. There just really isn't. Everything I'm going to do is just purchased stuff. I may do a website article on it because if it's good stuff, well then Amazon affiliate links and you know, you understand marketing, <laughs> but uh, no video for that. So, and the reason why I can't DIY something is because it's the only place that the screen would be appropriate is in the path that I need to have open for my truck to drive around the shop to get my utility trailer. I park it around behind the shop. So it always has to be open, and then there's no real convenient place on the property for a permanent structure. We've already got so much stuff on this 0.79 acres that we have. Uh, just it, it has to be just like a set up, tear down type of a thing. So nothing permanent. I'd love recommendations. Speaking of recommendations, beef jerky recommendations. Do you have any recipes that you really, really like for specifically ground beef beef jerky so we have a bunch of ground beef left over from our last half cow purchase i'm trying to go through we've been i'm, I'm so burnt out on taco meat <laughs> but we've been doing i've been doing a lot of uh, ground beef jerky and our go-to seems to be one or two two i guess two go-to recipes for ground beef beef jerky and that is two pounds ground beef with quarter cup of any type of Tex-Mex seasoning, we like the Hardcore Carnivore brand. So Tex-Mex Hardcore Carnivore brand, and then also uh, a quarter cup of, what is the other one? Hardcore Carnivore Black. So just a quarter cup of black and two pounds of ground beef, quarter cup of Tex-Mex and two pounds of ground beef. That's that's pretty good starting point. And then like 165, or four hours, depending on, four or five hours, depending on how thick it's laid out on the uh, dehydrator sheets. So yeah, if you have any good beef jerky recipes, I'm always down for another recipe, specifically for ground beef beef jerky. Next up on the list is shellac in a sprayer. Got, it's weird how things come in stages. I got a couple emails uh, this week about leaving shellac uh, in my sprayer. I've mentioned that several times. And yes, I leave shellac in my sprayer. This gun right here, of course, there's a cup that goes on the top. But this is the Fuji sprayer for my Fuji HVLP system. I have the Fuji Q5 Platinum HVLP sprayer, which is capable of spraying a lot of thick finishes. Now, I used to keep shellac in this at all times, ready to go at a moment's notice. And the reason why you can get away with doing that, you don't have to clean out the gun every time you use the shellac, is shellac is a burn-in type of a finish. It burns into the layer below it. Well, that means it's it's like self-cleaning on the, on the needle here. As soon as you start spraying, whatever comes through is going to clean out whatever little gunk was built up there, if there ever was any gunk. So I left it in there for a year, maybe two years. And then I realized that I want to spray some thicker finishes that this is very capable of spraying. 
So I don't need to leave this expensive setup dedicated to shellac, which is a very thin setup. So I'm gonna walk and talk. So what I did is I stopped putting shellac in the uh, HVLP sprayer, the dedicated Fuji sprayer, and I picked up one of these little gems, right? The Harbor Freight Special, these are like 14 bucks. Uh, they're, um, they're not the best sprayer, but for shellac, hey, it's 14 bucks. The worst thing you can do is have to throw it away. Um, but like I said, it burns in, so it never clogs anything up. Every Next time you start spraying, it immediately cleans it out and you're good to go. You can have something set up for spraying shellac at a moment's notice. Now this setup right here is for small stuff. My wife's laser engraving business, everything that she makes is small, and this with a little pancake compressor, an itty bitty little compressor, can spray shellac on stuff like that with no problems. If I was spraying like, let's say you did a log home interior, right? You, all your walls are you know, shiplap, wood and you want to do shellac to seal it all obviously this in a pancake spray is not going to keep up but for small furniture here in the shop inexpensive gun shellac and a very inexpensive small pancake sprayer is, or compressor is basically all you need uh, i'm getting by with it just fine anyway you put the uh, the regulator on the the small compressor to i think it's like 90 psi and then turn this down to like 35 ish psi and it can keep up with no problems. You're not spraying a tremendous amount of air that way. Uh, so yeah, I now I have now I have something I gotta hold. So let me go put this back and keep on talking. I'm not sure what I'm gonna talk about because I don't know what's on my list. If I was smart, I would have looked at the list before I walked over there to put that on the rack. But that's okay because I can ramble on and on and on and on. And here we go. Next thing on the list is floor lamp build. I have an idea that I think will be fun for my daughter. And that is to use some uh, one eighth of an inch hardboard, inexpensive material, and run it through the laser engraver with the conveyor mode. So I can, I think the conveyor on this laser engraver allows uh, material from 18 inches wide and up to 118 inches of length to run through the conveyor, which sounds awesome. That's that's great. Uh, but I'm not going to use the full 118 inches in length. But I'm thinking something along you know, 12 to 16 inches wide, probably a little bit taller than me, and you run it through the laser engraver to cut out some really nice decorative shapes or whatever, just some type of theme that she's into, some Disney characters or her name, whatever. And then on the inside of that, you attach some white paper. Well, you do a, a front panel and a back panel of hardboard with both with cutouts so you can rotate it 180 if you want to change the look of it maybe engrave something different on the back side than you do the front side and then you do these almost like not a two by four but a two by four shaped side panels that have a saw curve in them front and back so you can slide your two pieces in your front and back pieces and then put some led light strips on the sides shining this way and it's going to light up the paper on the inside and project it out and you know all the different colors and whatnot i think it'll be a fun little lamp for a kid's room uh that's a fun project that i've been thinking about making so i think i'm going to do that upcoming another upcoming thing is my wife wants two shelving units for my daughter's room so i got to get on to that uh i think that's it that is it nothing else on my list you guys take care have a great day and i'll talk to you in the next video